the subject of this um, is to some degree a, a, a fallout of some comments that uh, I've had back and forth with um, um, Mark Mortimer from the product team um, and some other comments that have gone on and some of my own observations. Um, the program I'm in, um, we'll go into in a few minutes, but I've been in for a few years. So we're going to talk about my path and how I ended up here and um, what this program does um, and the various aspects that we're looking at from the various parts. So um, I'm Tom Cantor uh, at FIDEX, uh, and here's how you can contact uh, me. In the background, you see some of my You'll see some of my photos in the background, places I've visited over the years. Um, I spent 12 years in the U.S. Navy as a nuclear power plant uh, submarine operator. Um, and uh, after I got out of that, I went uh, into 10 years doing software testing. Uh, ended up as a QA architect at Sybase. Um, uh, rode a, a system called TMS, which is the test management system had 800,000 lines of code in it um, written in Core and Shell. Uh, that started back in 98, which was the start of my um, uh, foray into integration. Um, I worked for a company called New Era of Networks out of Denver, Colorado. Um, and our primary purpose was uh, uh, a rules engine and a format engine and a queuing engine. Uh, the formatter and rules engine was sold to IBM and became the core for IBM WebSphere MQ Integrator. Um, I've been doing work with Microsoft for 25 years um, uh, as a partner, as a vendor, in various roles, um, going back to 1990 or so when I was still in the Navy, and then uh, 92 when I uh, joined AttachMate. Um, and, uh, uh, spent a lot of time very closely aligned with Microsoft in various ways. A lot of my friends and people I've uh, met over the years all work at Microsoft. Uh, 23 years doing um, stuff with IBM technology. Uh, Attachmate was a IB, uh, IBM mainframe terminal emulator. I was on the uh, gateway team doing SNA protocol translation over TCP IP. Um, and then uh, in uh, we downloaded a version of Linux a couple years while I was there, and we started with Linux back then. Um, and then when I got over to uh, New Era Networks, made the full transition uh, to um, a Unix-based platform and mainframe. Uh, TMS ran on HP, UX, AIX, Sun Solaris, OS 400, so on and so forth. And then in uh, 2006, um, I got inducted into the, at that time, as it was called, the VTS program. So that was shortly after um, Brian and I, Brian Loskin and I, did the, um, the uh, ESB. Uh, it became the ESB toolkit at a major vendor. Um, Brian and I worked closely together for about 10 months and uh, I brought that to fruition. So the background, where does the VTS program come from? So in um, 03, November of 2003, before I got involved, um, there was a, a recognized a, a need for a BizTalk specialty. Now back then, of course, that's BizTalk server in 2002, but 2003 is coming up. And uh, the technical specialist teams that were out in the field were it was recognized was not a large enough team to meet all of the integration requests that were coming from the field. We're kind of at a knee point in the requirements for uh, integration. So uh, that was proposed, um, and in 04, they first started having meetings. This was uh, from a group out of in the field uh, that proposed it, met with the product team. Uh, and then in June of uh, 04, um, that became an officially sponsored program, um, and it was launched in Southern California uh, in September of 2004. Um, in that first short time period of nine months or so, the first five VTSs were recognized as bringing already in $1 million in BizTalk revenue. 
Um, that was on Best Survey 2004. So already it had a large impact on the program. We're going to see kind of some, you know, factors in why the system exists today. Um, that was uh, finally launched nationwide in June of 2005. And then there was an initial case study. If you uh, do some searching and on the Wayback Machine, you can find it um, uh, in 05 when they did the first VTS program case study. Now, moving forward uh, three years later, um, and I, uh, 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 six, uh, sorry, six, uh, five months later, uh, 05, um, there were 16 VTSs on board. There was a pretty significant recruitment program having to do with mostly personal references from the, the team members uh, in the VTS program who were leading it, uh, uh, finding good candidates. Uh, by uh, May of 2006, there were 26. Uh, I joined in August of 2006. In December of 2010, um, we had the VTS Summit in Redmond. There were over 1,000 VTSs worldwide. And the program had been expanded to beyond just the BizTalk program. So there's SharePoint, SQL Server, um, and now Azure uh, VTSs worldwide. Uh, 2014, um, the program was renamed the Partner Technology Solution Professional and expanded a little bit. Uh, more external visibility, um, and then in 2015, there's currently over 1,500, uh, and now as I'm moving forward, we're going to call it the, what the current name is, which which is the PTSP program uh, worldwide. So, pretty significant program. So, we're this slide here. We're going to talk a little bit about who is a PTSP. Um, and these are, um, you know, uh, what are we looking for in qualities for a person who is a candidate for this? The background is people who have a proven track record in sales. So um, you've demonstrated in front of possibly you've been brought in to a Microsoft engagement, or you've spoken in front of a Microsoft uh, sales opportunity because of some other expertise, um, or uh, internally on your own in your own company, you're well known for being good at sales. So, um, you know, and this is an important aspect. I don't want to minimize this, but technical pre-sales is what, as we'll see later, what drives the consumption and the, and the follow-through with the customer market. Solution selling experience. So uh, the arc of the architect <clears throat> goes beyond um, just being able to do technology solutions. You need to have an idea of what is the arc of an entire solution environment. and. Um, and that was uh, very evident to me when I was uh, working with the Microsoft retail team. Uh, and uh, that it was vital that we had a, the idea of the solution. So internally, we had to sell uh, the entire solution to the business. And that's important for the business, because the business needs a final, uh, final idea of what uh, everything is about. Sorry. Now, this is a two-way role. We'll talk about this in a little bit. But the value from the Microsoft viewpoint is that they are a um, we're, we're we're helping them close sales, um, and it drives win rate for the Microsoft team. Um, we're very good at developing relationships internally with Microsoft. So I have that long track record initially with the um, with the team, uh, various uh, uh, people that I've met over the years internally at Microsoft, but also I'm very internally at Microsoft. I'm very um, public and very helpful. So I, I jump in a lot of opportunities, uh, try to help as much as I can, try to do what I can do. Uh, 
focusing on articulating the Microsoft strategy. Now, um, as a PTSP, we'll talk about this later, we have a more um, access and we'll, we will be shared uh, NDA information as, as uh, um, other aspects like MVPs do, um, but we also have direct access. So we can do our own research and, and fill in our own gaps. Uh, successfully positions Microsoft products. So in an, in an environment where you're in a compete or uh, so on and so forth, you can explain, uh, uh, enumerate the reasons why a Microsoft product fits in a particular area uh, against the competitor, why it is a good match. But also we have to have a strong technical background. Um, it's not just enough that we can speak to the technology, we have to be able to talk one-on-one -on -one with the developers and the architects who are interested in the technical details. Evangelizing Microsoft offerings, of course, is, is vital to this. Um, and a lot of that has to do with how we are able to um, explain where the arc, where the long-term role is. So a lot of the talks I give uh, involve uh, talking about the um, the future of Microsoft, where it's going, what it's doing, um, the roadmap. So probably about four sessions so far this year, just doing nothing but Microsoft roadmaps. In this, we work with the um, Microsoft team, and we will be called on to actually produce this the architecture for solution proposal. So we will get up in the whiteboard and stand in front of the the, the customer um, and um, uh, in uh, hands-on sessions, could be an ADS, could be a POC and so on and so forth, and we will uh, design the architecture for the future. Um, we also help Microsoft migrate uh, customers from a competitor to a Microsoft technology stack. So we have to understand the competition. Um, in a strong way. Uh, my long, long history with uh, IBM technology helps me a lot in that regard because um, I can talk to the stack, how it operates, where it matches, um, so on and so forth. And of course, engaging at deep technical levels, again, going back to the, the long talks we can have, um, and we'll, I'll cover that in a little more detail in the uh, Puerto Rico sample, but you have to have that technical expertise. And solid design review experience. I don't know where you can get trained on this, but um, you know, over the course of time, we all have had many chances to uh, become experts at design review and walking uh, samples through, but it's, it's a vital aspect. So looking at this list, this is the kind of person that I look for, that I look uh, around in, and if I ha am in a position, we'll promote and try to bring into the program. Okay. What is the partnership? So this is a two-way street. This is not just us as partners walking in and going, Microsoft, what you got, right? This is a balanced relationship. My role, I act as an extension of the Microsoft sales team. I'll step in, do pre-sales technical support. Sometimes I don't hear back from them for a year. But, um, you know, it could be an email that I spend 20 minutes responding to. It could be a month of on-site effort. Um, you know, it depends on what that, um, you know, what the value is, what the need is. Um, you know, what is the criticality of the customer? Position, demonstrate, design, and implement Microsoft solutions. You're a doer. You're a person who actually walks through and does the stuff every day. Engage, become deeply integrated in the Microsoft sales consumption teams and processes. They have a process. We're, I'm not here to tell them, the Microsoft team, what their process is. I have to become knowledgeable in it, understand it, Understand the roles of the people I'm talking to and what incents them. What does what brings them to me in order to succeed? 
And most importantly, you've got to meet with your Microsoft team biweekly. This is a regional effort. You're talking to your local sales team in your region. Um, they are your partners. Um, and so there is a commitment from you that you're going to meet with them and bring value to them, talk to them about opportunities, what you've got going, how things are going, and also what things you might need from them. And then a commitment they can respond to requests from Microsoft within two business days. We're going to see why this is a balanced partnership in a moment. And then contribute to build a robust partner practice uh, for each workload and the P seller partner, sell, deploy, drive consumption and usage. In other words, you're not just following behind the sales team, but you're leading them also. Um, there's going to be opportunities that you can't actually step into um, as a small company. There are customers that wouldn't normally talk to us. But, you know, with leading Microsoft into that opportunity, they can bring us into the role. It might be our ID and our opportunity, but we wouldn't be able to get in without their assistance. What does Microsoft need to do? This is a commitment on their side. Um, so you have to understand that when you were talking to your Microsoft uh, partners, you need to think about what you're asking them to do. So they're going to have to work jointly with you to work through wins that are identified through your planning sessions. They're going to have to position, demonstrate, design, and implement Microsoft solutions. They're going to have to help you through this. Um, they have to embrace the PTSP role as a part of their extended sales team. So each partner that's in the PTSP role um, is essentially a, a, an extension, um, and they need to actively participate and include you in their role. Um, also help the PTSPs become ingrained, integrated with the Microsoft sales consumption teams and processes. A lot of the training that I got initially was how does the Microsoft sales team work? Who reports to who? What is their roles? You know, how are they incented for um, uh, bringing opportunities forward? What makes them um, become interested in what they're doing? And then um, they have to commit to meet with you on that bi-leak schedule. They respond. They have to respond to requests for, from you within two business days. But on the enablement side, they're going to drive the partner technical enablement, increase partner capacity. They want to make you able to handle larger roles within the customer, right? Um, and uh, bring partner wins to you. So the sales team is committed to bringing their revenue to close um, and to, as we did with the initial VTS program, um, we were able to close license deals for um, the Microsoft team uh, for BizTalk, uh, which met their quota needs. And then we got the potential of becoming the partner that um, completed that work. So. Uh, and this is newer in the last five years, but accelerating the cloud adoption and consumption. Um, so that's become a vital part of the sales process with Microsoft. That's where we're all going. So that's a key element to um, their, their need. Now, the goal of this slide kind of tell you why small partners succeed um, in the P seller program, the PTSP. Uh, historically, um, uh, the field has been trained um, and, uh, as is appropriate, has been a, a, a aligned to bring in a partner that is size-wise appropriate to the customer. So if you have a very large EPG customer, there has been historically, 10 years ago, um, a probability that it would bring in a partner that was um, uh, in the same size range. This hasn't been working. 
there are only a very few partners that have more than 500 employees. So when they seek out large scale partners to align with the customer, the field is small, which means that they tend to bring in the same partners, the same clients over and over again at the large scale. The vast majority of partners, and this is true of consulting in general, have less than 100 employees. Large partners tend to generalize, have um, large swatches of teams that just do custom app dev. Smaller partners tend to have deep domain expertise. We have an interest in a particular field. We tend to collaborate and bring in experts that we know. If we do not have the capability, uh, we're more likely than not to call somebody, uh, bring them in, and engagement's part of the team. We're more agile, and we can respond quickly to changes and requirements. Larger partners, there's large-scale projects that need that level of effort, and they tend to bring the strong project management structure to the, to the solution, um, which sometimes is very vital. What do we do? Well, I call us the hidden branch of integration. Um, some of us are MVPs. Um, we're not as public as the MVP team is. Um, it's We come from a different purpose. MVPs are honored for their public expertise. Um, and as they should be. Um, PTSPs tend to be drawn in because they have done some uh, internal presentations, uh, have been in front of customers, um, they, or they align well with maybe a particular um, uh, area within the um, uh, region for, uh, for a need that the regional sales team uh, sees. We internally participate in a lot of the technical discussions about, I'm speaking specifically of the BizTalk discussion, discussion list. There's a technical discussion list. About 80% of all the technical questions on that are answered by PTSPs. Not entirely true in every area. We're fairly active, uh, but a lot, there's a lot of PTSPs on the Azure team, the SharePoint team, uh, and I see that they participate a lot. And as uh, alluded to before, we respond to assistance requests by the field in or out of region. So even if it's not in my region here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, and all of us PTSPs, we, we respond to a lot of assistance requests. Um, we'll guide them to PTSPs or MVPs or partners that we know of that are in region, if it's someplace that we can't reach into. Spend about 10% of our time helping the field sales team succeed. So um, uh, there are um, innumerable questions that come up uh, in health and life sciences and retail and finance, and we jump in and help out when we can. We work side by side with Microsoft and the experts in the room. Primarily, this is because we're being brought in because we're a good fit for the customer. We shouldn't be there if we're not the expert. So um, we work well when we understand the subject matter, uh, the subject that we're working on. And apparently, we never sleep. Um, a good model was, um, I've got a, uh, several, but this one was uh, very recent. Um, and uh, there was an HLS, Health and Life Sciences team need. The field sales team identified a very, uh, very lucrative um, uh, health and life sciences opportunity in Puerto Rico. Uh, my vertical specialties are health, life sciences, finance, and retail. Um, and um, also, uh, this was a, a, a good engagement between the field sales team at Puerto Rico and the PTSP. There were no regional, uh, there was no regional expertise in this field. Um, um, and um, it required, um, it was evident from the customer ask that there was a deep need for knowledge about their technical domain. 
uh, I had already had a long history of already working with the field sales team in, in uh, that region um, due to earlier engagements. Um, and the HLS team um, also uh, felt this is a good alignment based on um, you know previous uh, exercises I had done with them. So at the end of it, um, this ended up being a multi-day, almost five days, uh, four days of presentations with the customer on site in Puerto Rico. Um, and also included almost a month, uh, three weeks of continuous effort in Puerto Rico on site with the customer doing weekly interviews with various aspects of the teams to build the architecture and the design that met their needs. The key to this was a um, very big difference between what a normal um, or a lot of the sales cycles that I, uh, we do get an opportunity to go in on, where with the deep commitment from the sales team um, and uh, the deep commitment from the HLS team, um, we were more aligned with the customer's needs than normal. Um, and. We were able to um, demonstrate, uh, and I've got some elements here that we'll talk about later, why Microsoft was a good fit for them and uh, Microsoft technology. So it was a complete end-to-end -end ADS design POC with the CXX uh, level presentations. Um, and um, it was, um, it, it went very well, uh, a uh, very, uh, very good demonstration of how that kind of wine. And I learned a lot of Spanish. So, all right. There's rules of engagement. How you're going to come into an opportunity and you're going to um, work with the Microsoft team. This is different because you are being brought in to a close relationship. So let's talk about this a little bit. When you're talking to the Microsoft customer, we're kind of a hand, arm's length um, engagement at this point, where you can mention that we're a partner, but our job is not to engage in a dialogue during the delivery of the presentation, um, unless the Microsoft field team feels that that's an essential part of the sales cycle, right? So you don't get a copy of the evaluation or any of the surveys that the Microsoft team uh, gives. Uh, they do occasionally share that with you when they feel it's valuable. Um, you can collect some customer information if you're approached by the customer during the exercise um, and have relevant questions to cover on the event. It's customer driven, so it's th at their behest. It's a very gentle, light touch approach here. This is a funny one because um, the first requirement, position only Microsoft products and solutions for an engagement piece seller capacity. My pause is, I want you to think about your desktop that you have in front of you today. Do you have Chrome? Are you running iTunes? Do you have another non-Microsoft product? If you open up Internet Explorer, does it go to Google? It's interesting. I, I there are many products that I admire and, and think greatly of. But if I'm sitting in front of a customer and I'm presenting Microsoft products and 90% of my desktop is non-Microsoft products, what is the story? Am I presenting myself as the expert they need? Am I the right person to be presenting this? Um, I don't run any Google technology. I only search on Bing. I have a Windows phone. I don't use Fitbit. I use the Microsoft Band. It just seems apparent to me that I probably should present myself in the best case possible as being a Microsoft partner. All right. Adhering to the Microsoft Code of Conduct. Um, you'll get that if you become a PTFP, but basically it's, you know, be professional. 
uh, don't recruit employees from the customers. It seems self-evident, but worthwhile mentioning. We're also required to give a engagement summary to the Microsoft uh, team within 24 hours of the meetings. Um, the NDA is a direct relationship between you and the customer. Um, Microsoft is not the in intermediary here. It shouldn't require you exchange confidential information, um, uh, but you know it's going to be a direct relationship between you and the customer. It's not a bad thing. You're going to run into a situation where there's an incumbent partner who is already engaged, right? They will, Microsoft will try to bring in incumbent, incumbent partners who are already working with Microsoft. If I was at the other end of the stick, I'd be happy about that. I think that's probably the, my attitude with the situation. It's bring me in when you, when you need help with what I specialize in. Basically, if you don't fall into this, um, you know, and that, to be honest, I run into this more often than not being um, in the integration space. So it's not much, that much of an issue. This is the final bit. If you're, the goal of this scenario is you've done a good job. You've positioned yourself well. You've come in as the expert. The customer should feel um, when they do uh, move forward with this, you should be in a position where they would seek you out and have you as their um, to do the services bit. What does the Microsoft partner see? And I'm using the general term as P seller because there's two uh, two edges to the the program. There is the technical specialist and their sales specialist, right? But in general, kind of our job is to go out and identify the potential in a customer. Go with the Microsoft team and listen and see the ideas that the customer is bringing forward that you know is a good fit for Microsoft technology from your expertise. Working with the customer then, you're selling the value of that. Um, BAM comes to mind, um, uh, various components, uh, aligning it to their need, listening to their unexpressed details. Um, and then on top of that, securing the commitment, uh, getting that customer to see the future of them fitting in that, using that approach to meet their model. Also, when that customer sees the how it can be used, Get the customer to see that it's a value to them, um, and you know, you increase the share of the wallet. Okay, this is the typical sales cycle for the Microsoft um, field team. And at the top, you see the technical edge, and at the bottom, you see the sales edge. And we're engaged as the PTSP level um, and the PSSP level. Uh, uh, during the customer engagement, we're developing the strategy and improving the value. So going and being hands-on with the team. Internally, with the sales team at the bottom, we're also looking at it and identifying new opportunities um, and growing existing opportunities. So bringing them to the forefront, bringing them to the picture, um, looking for strategy and uh, you know uh, getting aligned with Microsoft so that the opportunity becomes something that you can build together. Now, one of the things that we were looking at um, in, in Puerto Rico was where did partners in general, people who are into integration, who do this on a database basis, how do we compare against the other companies, um, against our competitors? Sometimes we talk about our technical aspects. But one of the things I wanted to show the customer in this scenario was 
how large is the space? How many people are actually interested? Take this on as an industry, as a job, so that they see value in it. So a comparison of the top vendors' participation in social media seemed very useful. So we did some searches. I went on Amazon, and I did a search on books, books written about this talk and integration in general. IBM, Oracle, MuleSoft. There are a lot of books written about this talk in general, and integration in general uh, from the Microsoft viewpoint compared to IBM and Oracle MuleSoft. And those books are written by people, partners, for the most part. Um, that's a lot of books. Blog counts, just hits on blog entries out in the space. Um, I got 1.9 million hits on BizTalk. That this is a, a field that has a tremendous follow-up uh, compared with the other uh, vendors. Um, what I did also then is I looked uh, on the wiki articles uh, uh, sponsored, hosted by the vendor, but managed by partners, and just page count, right? They're, and I'm sure I'm going to get some feedback on the, the page count, so please feel free to correct me and get, give me the right number. I'm sure I'm missing something, but specifically higher page count. Um, just the number of articles that are written um, by partners on the Wikipedias about BizTalk integration. Finally, there's nothing that compares with the, the PTSP program. Uh, now, I grouped all PTSPs. Uh, the integration PTSPs is a much smaller group, but it doesn't matter what area you're looking at. There's no other program like that. So as I was going through this, I was trying to think about where this sat. And, and I think this is a pretty valid statement. By any social media measure, partners are what makes integration work for Microsoft with a glue that brings everything together. This is not, this is, would not be a, a balanced measure if, the, if there wasn't um, recognition of the MVP uh, portion of this. Um, and the contrast I'm making here is the difference between many long conversations I had with Steve Young, um, the internal versus the public aspects of the PTSPs and the MVPs, because MVPs are very, they're the public area of um, integration, uh, Microsoft integration. They're the visible branch. They're the ones we see every day. 1.9 million blog entries. I buy some. Uh, almost every one of the books uh, out there have been written by MVPs, um, either before they became MVPs or uh, in recognition of their book entries. Some of them are PTSPs. Uh, uh, Bill Chestnut in Australia uh, 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 comes to mind. Um, and publicly, they're the experts in their own. Uh, they're, they're, they are the experts in the room, but they're in the public aspect more than more than PTSPs are, and they apparently never sleep. So, uh, if you've ever seen any of Nino's presentations, all right, I'm a partner. I, I'm a customer. I'm a customer. How do they engage with you? You're a partner. We're brought in by the field team. You, you would not reach out to me and say, Tom, I need you to come and do this uh, with me. Um, this, is an, this is a co-relationship. It can be reached. I certainly will you know, respond. Um, but I will then uh, find the appropriate field team in your area and, and um, get them involved. Mostly this is by calling your local sales office. And this is part of that relationship thing and uh, the, the customer needs is they 
they need to have that local support, that person they can call. Um, and we facilitate that, um, both if we get reached uh, from outside and also during the sales cycle. When you're reaching out, you, this is the big value that you can get out of this. Be specific. Be specific in the technology, the reach, the area, what you need, why you need them, as detailed as possible. They shouldn't be able to find the perfect guy easily. Also, you're in a, most customers are in a vertical space. Um, they're the vertical teams internally at Microsoft know in, in the PTSP world who their experts are, who they lean on. And so they will guide the, the uh, field sales team to bring in the appropriate resource. All right. As you're sold on the program, it's a wonderful way to go. You want to get involved. This starts with your local field team. Um, you're going to be calling. Uh, as a company, this is a commitment. So um, understand that the the you know there's upfront cost in getting involved, um, engaging with the local uh, field team, uh, explaining why you're you think you're a good match for it, what um, vertical market specialty you bring to, right? And again, we're matching with the customer. We want the customer to find uh, you, right? So you need to be specific in your in your skill set, um, and that you and that you're going to bring this technical detail to the environment. As we call back, what it was, a, what was on the list of things to be a good PTSP. Get connected to your vertical team. The field team will bring you in and, and introduce you, once you become part of the program, to the, the vertical teams, um, be that, you know, whatever it is, healthcare, retail, finance, manufacturing, you know, left-handed widgets. Um, they are large teams internally at Microsoft who are specifically aligned with the market. The field is not specifically aligned with the market. So you, you can be that bridge between those two teams. Needless to say, if you're an Azure expert and you can uh, uh, help out with that, you will definitely get attention. The other thing is that you have a provable track record of success that you have can point to historical engagements where you've been able to make the difference in a customer sale. Um, You've got specialty skills. Um, your skills match with some vertical area. Imagine the sales team talking to the customer about possibly coming to do an ADS or a design session or something like that. And they recall the customer mentions something, and they recall specifically a conversation with you where you say you have expertise in that. It's going to go a lot, lot, a longer way than it would if it was a resume. I had a dupe of a slide. Sorry about that. So over the years, what have I learned? For Microsoft, the integration, the integration network, I, I don't think there's anything that compares to it. I started in IBM. Um, I don't see anything like it. And from measurable, observable values, I, I don't think that, that, that there is any comparison. There's something about the mindset that brings somebody into the integration field. If I was a customer, um, I, uh, or speaking to customers, I'm going to say this. You're not alone. You, you do not have to develop this stuff from scratch. All of us are reachable. We're very public. Um, uh, and. Um, you should not be expected to do this alone. Um, integration in general, regardless of vendor, is hard. What do the partners do? Apparently, the integration partners collaborate extensively. 
um, and we see that. We welcome each other well at events. Uh, uh, we go fly tremendous distances to see each other. Um, we communicate internally. Um, you know, it goes on. Apparently, we love collaboration because there's a lot of blogs out there, books, discussion lists, you name it, that is out there. Um, and there are some very, you know, almost all of us are very active to one degree or another. And these are some of the smartest people I have ever met. I think I know, I've known some smart people. So, anyway. Uh, for PTSP engagements, uh, reach out to your local Microsoft sales rep. Uh, you can reach me at uh, TomCanter at Fidex.com, uh, my Twitter account, um, LinkedIn, and my blog account. And uh, I'm with Fidex, specialized in Microsoft technology, uh, and uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud, um, very, uh, uh, Technologies, very uh, Microsoft-centric technologies all around. I'm going to turn the slide off from presentation mode, and 